Amen. 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 I want us to sing this song before we get started. It is well. It is well with my soul. why it is well with our soul. When we went astray, not knowing exactly where to go, you caught up with us. That is the reason why it is well with our soul. In this coming back, it must be well with us. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. We glorify you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, boy. Amen. Amen. I want to appreciate some people that put a lot of effort into this. I'm going to start with the people up there. Although they feel like gods, they are not gods. <laughs> Just because your eye up there doesn't make you a god. Amen. <laughs> Femi, thank you very much. Can you please put the first slide? <laughs> Amen. I want to appreciate our fathers and Lord. I really appreciate. I, I, I learned a lot from them. I'm, I'm honestly telling you from our fathers, from our mothers, from a lot of people actually here. I want to appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, I want you to tell two, three, four people that buckle up your seatbelt, you're about to go on a fast ride with Jesus. Tell them, tell them. Hello. Hey. This ride is going to be fast. This ride is going to be fast. Tell, I want you to tell somebody, it's going to be a fast ride. Tell somebody else. Buckle up your seatbelt. The Chinese people usually say this. The Chinese people say this. They say, it is, I hope you live in interesting times. I want to let you know that we are living in interesting times. You see, you've seen it yourself. Interesting times. We live in a time where the moral values of people have been distorted. We live in a time where people applaud foolishness. As a matter of fact, foolishness has now become legal. Amen. Amen. We live in a time where Jesus Christ is no longer coming soon. He is coming right away. We've been saying it. Did you think he wasn't going to come? I'm here to give you prophecies straight from the Bible to know how close you are to the coming of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, some of you are going to run home and be scared. It is okay to be scared. I didn't come here for you to pray for repentance. That's your choice. Amen. Amen. If you like, continue where you are continuing. That's your business, your prerogative. Makes no difference to me. What I'm going to pray for you is that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because it is, it is called stamina. It will last you. Because some of you are going to get excited and feel like changing. But after one week, you are back to the same way you are. But until you get convicted by the Holy Spirit, there is no change to any man. No man is able to pull himself up by his own bootstraps. It's not happening. Oh, I'm going to be good by myself. It doesn't get you to heaven. You better hear what I'm saying. I've seen a lot of good people. So, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the only one. Don't get it confused. Every other religion is another God. If you say, we all worship the same God, that is something I hate to hear. We don't worship the same God. We worship different gods. We, 
we cannot be saying that Jesus is our way. Another person cannot be saying Muhammad is the way. Another person cannot be saying Hindu is the way. How can we be the same? It's not the same God. It's different things we're worshiping. Amen. You better know where you stand. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you and say, know where you stand. I also want to appreciate the choir for a well, a, a good job. I praise God for your life. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm getting ready to get started. How are we doing? Okay, they tell me it's three minutes, so I have to come back a little bit. Um, I was watching the TV the other time, and I saw a guy called Basket Mount. How many of you know Basket Mount? You know Basket Mount? Don't lie. Yes. It's okay to know Basket Mount. Do you know him? Yes. And he was on TV the other time. He said he got to heaven. So why did he go to heaven? There was the angel was right there in front of him. And the angel said, what is your name? He said, Basket Mount. They flipped through the pages. I'm sorry, your name is not Doya to hell. He said, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Uh, my name is, I, I don't know his real name. Do you, does anyone know his real name? I think it's John, whatever, let's just say John Doe. So he said, John Doe, check on that John Doe. So they went flipping through it. There's no John Doe here, please. But, he said, wait, 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 wait. Son name comes first, so Do John, try Do John. <laughs> They said, no, no, go to her. He said, As a, you know what? You're an employee. I want to speak to your employer. I want to speak to the employer right now. You are an employee. Listen, folks, that is very amusing. It is not going to happen that way. I just told you that so you can get excited for where I'm about to take you. It is not happening that way. Amen. Jesus talks about two coming. One is the rapture. Second is the second physical coming of Jesus where everybody sees him. Amen. Amen. It comes to an end. Thank you very much. Not now, not wait, just wait. End time prophecies. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell the person next to you, get yourself together. Get yourself together. Uh, yeah, tell them very well, shake them, you'll have to shake them. Yeah. yeah. I have 45 minutes, so it's going to be a lot of shaking in the house in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, the second law of thermodynamics states in 1850, listen carefully, second law of thermodynamics, entropy, it states that everybody, it says, everything goes from a place of order to a place of disorder. That means the sun is going to burn out. Your car is going to depreciate. As a matter of fact, your weave on and your wig, hallelujah, is going to lose value. I'm sorry to say, amen. I know some people are rolling their eyes, but what is this man talking about? Everything loses value. In other words, everything comes to an end. Psalm 102 says the same, same thing. It said, God created the heavens and the earth. They will all perish, but he remains. And the earth will wear out like a garment. That was a thousand years before they found the first law of, um, second law of thermodynamics. That's 1850. Listen carefully, a thousand, if only they read the Bible, they would have seen it. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I'm saying? Tell the person next to you that the solution is in the Bible. 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 Amen. Amen. When I went to Nigeria the other time, I have 45 minutes. I'm, I'm going to be very precise. I, I promise. I'm not going to use one of them. Before, I think I meant to do um, a little prayer after that, but I will be using my time exactly. Listen, when I went to Nigeria the other time, and my father's friend was saying something. He said, the Lord gave him a revelation. He said, as he saw 50 lanes going to hell, 50 lanes, and he saw one golden path going to heaven. And the 50 lanes was packed up with people struggling to be on the lane. Not one person was passing through the path. No, he said he didn't see one person. So this kingdom of God has become more serious than you thought. Amen. So you better buckle yourself up. Hey, hey, hallelujah. If you don't have any other job, nobody's telling you to quit your job. Do what you are supposed to do and keep Jesus on your right hand. You better keep Jesus on, because if rapture happens, which is going to happen anytime soon, be here. Amen. Amen. Now listen carefully. I, I'm going to say some few other things because I have a lot of things written down. But I'm also trying to keep up with time. The Lord said I should tell you people reasons, the reasons why they are not going to get to heaven. I want you to get this very well. He said I should let people know, because a lot of Christians, they think, you know, so far I'm not doing adultery, I'm not running to another person's house, I'm not doing fornication, you know, I'm okay, I'm going to heaven. Are you sure? Amen. Amen. Because most people, they walk around and they think because they haven't done those, there's some particular sins, if I haven't done it, I'm, I'm holy and I'm righteous. You are deceiving yourself. You better check again. 
Amen. Let me give you an example. A man, and one, uh, actually, somebody gave me. He said a lady got to heaven, and God gave her a revelation. When she got to heaven, the Lord, she said she wants to enter heaven. The angel stopped and said, where are you going? You're not going anywhere now. She said, ah, but I, I, left, I lived my life well now. I, I did very well. I know Jesus. And they stopped her from going into heaven. The, the angel said, open your hands. When she opened it, it was 10 match, match sticks in, on her hand. Yeah. And she was wondering, where, where did I get this from? Yeah. The angel now brought her back. He said, you went to your neighbor and you asked them for match, matches, one matches, one match. And they gave you one. But while she was not looking, you took 10 because, you know, it's insignificant. So 10 matches thick did not let her get into heaven. Listen, the things that get people to heaven are things they don't know they're doing. You don't know you're doing it. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? You see, people that do those things, like um, big time things, like the ones you know, eh? they pray about it, so they're praying for forgiveness. So it's easy for God to forgive you when you're on it and praying about it. Not because you should be doing it. But the thing that you did that you don't even know you did. Going to your office and taking paper clips. The Bible says every unrighteousness is a sin. Yeah. Every one of it. There is no joke about God, whether you believe or you don't believe. You see, because you don't know, you don't pray about it. Let me give you an example. Saying things about people that you don't know. And you be they call it gist. I like to hear gist too. God help me. Ah, I, I, I've been delivered. <laughs> Deliverance from gist. You'll be talking about someone and you don't know anything about what they're saying. Let me give you another example. Unforgiveness. You will be surprised in church. In church, here. Yeah. Unforgiving spirit. Walking around, fighting around the whole place. You know, nobody can talk to you. You are too big. You are bad, you know. Keep on doing that. Because I'm telling you in this place, in this place, you better be careful. I'm watching myself too, eh? Cohesy, this thing. But you got to get to heaven. By any day, get to get to heaven. Eat that one. As far as you are in there. In there. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to get you to a place, and I'm about to start the slide, because I want us to understand how close the prophecies are. We are living in interesting times. Femi, please, can you move me to slide one, please? Hallelujah. That is called the earth timeline, chronologically. I'm not talking about evolution. Uh, 35 million years. Who's talking about that? The Bible says the earth is 6,000 plus years. That's it. That's what the Bible says. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, you write it down for them in their exam so that you can pass your exam. That's about it. Apart from that, that's not what the Bible says. If you add up the years in the Bible, it adds up to 6,000 and something years. Now, we are 6,000 years from creation plus. Look, you can see it on the screen. That's the creation of Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. 4,000 years to the flood. When the flood happened, we're 4,000 years away. 2,000 years to Jesus. That means from the creation to us is basically 6,000. I'm giving you a wrap-up. Now, if you read the Bible carefully, there's a part that says something which is quite interesting. Thomas said, behold, he comes, just like in the book of Enoch, he comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment. Amen. Now, Thomas must have read the book of Enoch. Enoch, because that's what he was stated. If you read it back very well, he must have read the book of Enoch. There's a book of Enoch anyways, by the way. And just to let you know, this is a time graph we have. If you, if you go through other things, you know that we are very close to the time. We are in 6,000 and something years. Seven days of creation. A thousand years for every day. Do your mathematics yourself. Those who have an ears will hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Yeah, be sober and vigilant. Keep your eyes open. While you are crying, keep it open. The devil is not playing games with you. I, you, know, you know, the devil is not playing. We might be playing, but he's not playing with you. Amen. Can you please move me ahead, please? Amen. Now, the Bible are based on prophecies. The reason why you should believe the Bible is because the hard evidence of the Bible are the prophecies being made. That means if Isaiah says something, it must come to pass. If it doesn't come to pass, then he is not a prophet. Do you hear what I'm saying? The reason why those prophets are in the Bible is because whatever they said came to pass. Do you hear me very well? But don't be arguing with people that will be quoting science for you. Quote, this is prophecies. Let me give you a hard evidence of a long-term prophecy. Daniel gave a prophecy of the coming of Jesus. If you go to the book of Daniel 9, 25 to 27, which you're seeing on the screen, amen, you'll see that it talks about 
70 sevens. How many of you know what I'm talking about? 70 sevens, which is 490. Although in some Bible it says weeks, but it is not weeks, it's years. If you start, it's Sabbath years. If you go to the book of Leviticus, you'll see what I'm talking about, why it is Sabbath years. It's not weeks. So it gives you 490 years. Look at, someone is making a profit 490 years before the coming of Jesus. Amen. They call him in, the, in, the, in Daniel, they call him the anointed one. It is also called Messiah. If you want to understand what anointed one means. Amen. So, at the ex, at Texas, I find it very difficult to pronounce it. At Texas decree. That is one of the kings that was responsible in the time. Persian king. Amen. That overthrew, Bab that overthrew Babylon. Are we clear so far? So, under Cyrus, but this is the king that gave Ezra the decree for him to go back and rebuild. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This king was the one responsible for it. If you had, that, that year was 458, 457 before Christ. Hallelujah. If you had 483 years to that year, it will give you 27 AD. Just the year of Jesus' baptism. When he started his public ministry. If you had another half a year, if you go to verse 27, half a year to it, he says the anointed one will be cut off. That means he died for sacrifice. This is a 490 prophet. Who would have thought? Amen. Read your Bible carefully. It's, it's right there in your face. Amen. So if you say you don't believe the Bible, you better really check yourself. Can you please move me ahead, please, Femi? Hallelujah. Are we here so far? I, I hope I'm not confusing anybody. Now let's get down to the real, real business. Seven signs of his return biblically. One, the Jewish people are going to be returned back to their own country. That already happened in 1948. Amen. It's not a new thing anymore. It's happened already. They actually created their own land for them. Amen. 1948. Next one. The reunification of Western... No, no, no. I'm sorry. Go back. The reunification of Western Europe. Who would have thought that would have happened? Bible prophecies. I'll show you where it is in the Bible. That means the EU. We are living in... We are in EU right now. So you can't even escape that one. Amen. Next one. The rise of a dictator. As a matter of fact, most, most people believe that dictator is meant to bring peace between the Jewish people and the Muslims. Number four, the emergence of a new religion. The rebuilding of the temple. It's going to happen. Why did, you know, they're saying, it is in the Bible, it's going to happen. They're going to rebuild that temple back. Although it seems, the Muslims are saying they will give their life for that to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, an attack on Israel from the north, which will be stopped by the God's power by itself. And Armageddon is the last one. But let me tell you something. The first one and the second one has happened. Before the third one happened, most theologians believe that the coming of Jesus Christ will be already before the emergence of a new dictator. And before you have a new religion. That religion is not Christianity. As a matter of fact, if you're a Christian in that time and you didn't go with the rapture, hmm. read Revelations very well so you can understand where I'm going with this. Hallelujah. Some of you have been a little quiet. I don't know, maybe what happened? Hallelujah. Give me the next side, please. Amen. Put a smile on your face. Now, this is the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. Obama had a dream. I have a dream too. My dream is to get to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. You better, you better be your dream. Amen. Now, listen to the dream. If you read that dream very well, there are five commas in there. You see, the head of gold, Babylon. It started with Babylon. Second, the breast of silver, Persia, that is BC, 539 BC. Listen carefully. The third one is the tides of brass, which is Greece. Alexander the Great. How many of you have read about Alexander the Great? Are we clear? Alexander the Great, 200 years before, before Greek and the Greek people actually came into power. 200 years. Greece was hardly anything, was hardly nothing. Who would have thought in three years? Alexander the Great went to put Greece on the map from 30 to 33. He was cut off at 33. Amen. The legs of iron shows Rome, Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was around when Jesus came. Are we clear so far? Then it goes to the feet of iron and clay. Most theologians are telling you that that is the EU. Toes coming together of kingdoms. The ten toes coming together. Most of this, as a, as a matter of fact, the reason why it's clay and iron is because 
they are not all that steady. You can, you can see they're always trying to bail them out. Amen. Hear me very well. This is very important. Um, Greece is having problems. They're trying to bail them out. Some of them are not exactly as strong as the other ones. Amen. This is, the, this is what I'm telling you. And most people believe that is the new Roman Empire. We are already, this is the dream of Daniel. And I'm, I'm sorry, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel is interpreting. And the angel was telling him this dream is for far future. It's not for now. And we are already at defeat, the last one. If you say it's not going to happen, what if it happens? If you say Jesus is not coming, what if it came? Is it not better to be prepared than not be prepared? Folks, this is a serious case. This prediction is made over 400 years before now. And now we are in it. They said this 2,000 years ago that Jesus is coming. Some of you think it's still coming soon. I hate that word soon because it thinks you think you have time. You do not have time. I'm talking about in the next 40, 50 years. I'm giving you, I'm honestly, I don't even know how. I'm getting too excited. I'm trying to calm down a little bit. Listen, when you go home today, you better get yourself ready. So when you go to work, focus. For, don't, don't miss the point. Hallelujah. Can you please shift me forward? I, I, want, I want to stop. I want, I want to go forward a little bit. Yes. The seven trumpets of revelation. Shake the person next to you. Just shake them a little bit. They look like they are sitting. Shake them. Wake them up, please. Wake up, wake up. Oh, yeah. Tell them to wake up, please. You wake up by fossil. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The seven trumpets. What is the seven trumpets talking about? We're living in the end times. I like to stress on that point. Amen. So while the world can do whatever they want to do, that is their prerogative. You get it right. Amen. Jesus is going to come. Rapture. Second coming. The rapture is going to happen sooner than the second coming. Amen. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, that is your prerogative. Amen. I'm letting you know that it's going to happen. The reason why it's going to happen is that everything that is in the Bible has, been, has actually come true. Now we are waiting for the end time. It will come to pass if Jesus said it. Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. It says, are we there? Um, Revelation 8, 7. Some of you can read it from your Bible anyways. And the Bible, it says, And hell and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and the third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burnt up. What is that prophecy? What is he saying? Do you know John had this dream 2,000 years ago? John had this revelation 2,000 years ago. What was he talking about? He says, do you know Second World War between 1939 and 1945? Most people believe that is one of the largest war. It is. It claimed 50 to 70 million people to show how catastrophic it was. It was that bad. Amen. Now listen carefully. This is the first trumpet. Now, the second one, trumpet says, and something like a great mountain with fire was thrown into the sea. Mm. Listen, then he says, a third of the sea became blood and thought of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Something like a great mountain with fire. That sounds very weird. When America dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that automatically ended the war. Next slide, please. Did it look like this? Something like a great mountain. What was he saying 2,000 years ago? Look at that picture very well. Ablaze. The mountain was ablaze. Does this one look like it's ablaze? Does that look high enough like a mountain? Be careful when you are reading the Bible because some of you are just reading through the Bible. You are not getting that revelation. Amen. Hear me very well. That bomb, the blaze, the light of that bomb killed 60% of people. When they dropped this bomb in, when they dropped the bomb in Hiroshima, um, in Nagasaki, it killed, that's what I'm talking about. This was the bomb that ended the war. What was John talking about 2000? Was he talking about something similar to this? Did it look like that? Look at it very well. Something like a mountain. Hmm. Next slide, please. The third trumpet, Revelations 8.10. 
And a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on the third of the rivers, on the springs of water. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Wow. Wormwood. Next slide, please. Hmm. What does it mean by Wormwood? 2,000 years prophecy. There was a nuclear, nuclear explosion in Russia, 1986. The, the reactor that blew was the fourth reactor. It's called Chernobyl. The English translation for Chernobyl is one word. Go and do your research. What is John talking about 2,000 years ago? What angel was this? Uh, hello? Are we here? What angel was this? Uh, that's a test question. I see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what angel was this one actually? <laughs> hey, Amen. That was the third angel. Listen, don't worry. You see, one thing about radiation explosion is a long-term death it causes. Long-term. Are we clear? It's not something that, oh, the reactor exploded. Probably 14 people died. But between 1986 and 2004, up to a million premature babies. It causes leukemia, it causes cancer, radiation, exposure. Can you go to the next slide, please? The, next slide, please, another one. The fish were literally jumping out of the water. What was John talking about? Could it have been Chernobyl he was talking about? That is a level seven explosion. In other words, that is a serious case. That was the third angel. Third war, that means third catastrophe. When I say Jesus is coming soon, you better understand what they mean by soon. And I hate that word, it's, it's coming right away. What we are talking about is not that long we are talking about. I'm honestly letting you know, it's not that long. Can you please move me to the next slide, please? The fourth and fifth angel, I'm just going to sum it up. Amen. Amen. Are we still here? Are we understanding what is being said? And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. What kind of smoke is that? Amen. Saddam Hussein attacked Kuwait. 1990, go for. How many of you have been paying attention to the news? Because if you pay attention to the news, you know what time we are. You better pay attention to the time you are in. It's not just about getting salary, getting paid, and going, uh, okay, I'm living a good life, I'm living life. Live life, actually, I, I, I wish for everybody to live life. If you don't get to heaven, I'm telling you there is nothing more important on this earth as we are sitting down that is more important than getting to heaven. There is nothing out there anymore. I promise you there is nothing. You see, most people don't know because it's an event that has never happened before. Every other event like earthquake you've seen, they've happened. Everything you've seen, oh, it doesn't bother you. But this one has never happened before. Man has never experienced it before. They've only been warned about this. This is the fourth and fifth angel. What exactly is he talking about? Now, listen, Saddam attacked Kuwait, blew up one of the oil rig. Give me in the next slide, please. Look at how thick that smoke is. Wow. Listen, not only one oil rig, 700 oil rigs were blown off. Kuwait did not see sunlight for three months. Three months, they did not see sunlight. How many of you knew about the Gulf War? Gulf War, 1990, come on. Some of you must have read it at least. Can you please move me to the next slide? And he said, then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth that they were giving power. What does he mean by locust? Well, he's talking about grasshopper and a whole flock of them. Some of you are thinking that because, you know, if someone is giving a prophecy that is 2,000 years ago, how does he know about, next slide, and the ship, let, let me, let me, take me back a little bit. Take me back again. Let me just read that one. <coughs> and they were given authority to kill them, but to torment them also for five months. The war lasted five months. 1990, August to December. Do the maths yourself. Whatever I'm saying, you can check it up. There's no need for argument about it. Amen. 
it says, and he gave them power to torment them for five months. Those without the seals of God on them. Those without the seals. Iraq is a Muslim country. There's hardly, I can hardly see any seal. 99.9% .9 of them are Muslims. There's no question to that. How many of you know what I'm saying is true? So there's hardly any seal of God on anybody. Next slide, please. The shape, of, the shape of, this is very interesting. The shape of the locals was like horses prepared for battle. Mm -hmm. Their head was crowns of something like gold and they, are, they had faces. What kind of a locust is this one? I've never seen any faces. If I saw a locust with a face, <laughs> I definitely would not be living in that area anymore. <laughs> Amen. But let me move you a little bit. Move to the next slide. Does this look like a 20th century locust? They had metal on them. He said they had metal. They had something like a crown on them. If you sit on that driver's seat right there, you will see the face of the person. That seems to me like a 20th century locust. I don't know about you. That is an, an Apache AH-64D longbow pictures. Now, carefully, that is exactly what the Americans use for that war. If you don't believe me, check it up yourself. Hallelujah. Does that look like a locust? When you start the engine and it starts spinning, do you know how loud it is? Did you read Revelations again? You see exactly what I'm talking about. Move me to the next slide. Those things are a killing machine. Combination of machine gun and missiles. Trust me, they will take anything out at any time. Those are very, very dangerous locusts. Okay? Those kind of locusts must not come to your area. You better be praying for deliverance. Because it's only God that will save you from this locust. Amen. Now, next slide, please. He said it had tails. Does that look like it has a tail? What if what I'm saying is true? And that was the fourth and fifth angel, trumpet. And it's only seven to be blue. What would you say? You better understand the time you are living in. So while you are eating and you are looking good, you better be understanding that when Jesus is telling you he's coming back, you better know how serious this sin is. Amen. Amen. Can you please move me to the next slide? They had a king over them. I'm about to end now. Of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is called Apodon. If you check the strong concordance. But in Greek, he has the name Apollo. Abaddon, if you check it out, means destruction. Apollyon means destroyer. Next slide, please. Listen, I'm about to get you somewhere. German Tribune and Jerusalem Post named Saddam Hussein's name. The meaning of that name is called the destroyer. Was he talking about Saddam? He said they had a king over them called Destroyer. If you find the root meaning, as a matter of fact, professor of Persian language, Dr. Willa Taxton, said the same thing, that the meaning of that name, Saddam, is called Destroyer. The Bible said they had a king over them called Destroyer. If someone can destroy 700 oil reefs, that's a very serious damage. The elderly midwife, who, as a matter of fact, the mother of Saddam, when they were trying to give birth to him, it was, she was in a lot of pain. She had to move away from Iraq. She moved to, they, I actually believe they moved to an area near to the Jewish people. And they said that pain was so much, that's why she gave her that name, because of that pain. And you've seen something similar in the Bible with Jabez too. If you, because of the pain, the mother seemed to... You better hear me very well. So if that is the fourth and fifth angel, <laughs> so we have, uh, how many months ago? What year is this? 2012. If you say it's not true, what of you is true? Amen. What I'm telling you today is that I don't want you, I want you to do what God tells you to do. Operate in your gifts, be successful, do whatever you. By the end of this thing, is your name in the book of life? Amen. Amen. Is that the last slide? Take me back a little bit, please. The sixth one, can you, can you come back? Thank you. The sixth one, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. The sixth one talks about Revi Euphrates, the sixth angel. It talks about the fact that it will be drying up. As I speak, it is drying up because of the dam they are looking to build. That drying up will help for the force that is about to come. People believe there is a war that is still coming. Amen. The Bible, he says it himself. He says it in Revelation. 
He said, I, I heard the number, 200 million. Sounds like, uh, what country we have 200 million? Let me guess. Sounds like China, I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't want to say anything that is not there. But I'm just giving you a speculation. And when the seven angels sound, I tell you to come up here. Those that have the seal of Jesus on them. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing with myself. I used to play with myself. It's not happening anymore. This one, this ending of Jesus, this Jesus coming back, is not a joke. Whatever it is, that is holding you back. Whatever it is. And you know, everybody can give a smiling face and somebody can come here wearing a nice suit and you look very good. And it looks like everything is good. It might not be good. Ask yourself. Let me give you a quick example. I'll give you one example. A man was having a fight with his wife. He had that fight. His wife was trying to apologize. He didn't hear it. This is something I read in Nigeria. They said he was dead for three days. When he got to heaven, the angel saluted him. He said he wanted to go into heaven. They said, no, 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 we're going to show you hell first. Ah, he said, no, 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 why do I want to see hell? Let me go to heaven. They said, no, 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 we're going to show you hell first. When he got there, it wasn't easy. Amen. It's not something that, you know, like people take as a joke. Amen. Amen. When he got there, the angel asked him, we know you're a man of God. They told him, we know. That means, if you're doing the work of God, they actually know you are doing it. I mean, they know you are doing it. Sincerely, they actually know. The, the angel was telling them that we know you're a man of God. He said, but if you died right now, what do you think? Where do you think you go? He said, of course, I don't you talking about. Maybe you just called me a man of God. <laughs> the angel said, no, you'll be in hell. He's been dead already. For, it, it, it was gone for three days. Three days. Listen. He said, how and why? The angel said, you were going, you were leaving. Your wife was telling you to forgive her. You were in the car, you were praying about it. But you didn't actually go out of the car and resolve that issue. You see, people do some funny kind of Christianity that I don't understand. I don't understand. How can you be asking, praying to God for forgiveness? Why the person, you can just tap the person beside you and say, well, what, the, what kind of forgiveness are you praying for? God is not going to answer that prayer. Don't deceive yourself. That is not Christianity. Christianity is not running to church every day. Ah, I have to make that prayer. And you cannot be of help to anybody. What, what are you practicing? You don't need to tell someone you're a Christian. They will know you're a Christian. I promise you, you won't need to tell them. From your behavior, they will know. Ah, what are you, it's not even, what are you, pra what, practice what you're preaching. You. It's not so much of um, um, fire. And it's good to kill people. And uh, 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 nothing against that. And you have to get your breakthrough in life. But I'm telling you that after when you finish doing that, anointing of God can make you preach the word of God because there's an anointing on you to do it. But it doesn't get you to heaven. What gets you to heaven is character. Amen. So it doesn't mean anything if you are preaching the word of God. Some people have been called to do this. There's no question to that. But it doesn't mean that Paul said, haven't done all this thing. How myself be found worthy. Character change. Character. Amen. 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 That is what gets people to heaven. Pastor Deboe preaching the other time and the Lord showed them thousands of people congregation the Lord said if I come right now only five people are going to heaven he himself was not included did he not say it he said it himself so how, tell me how do you explain that five people out of thousands and thousands of people let me tell you even the shocking news the other time I was listening to someone he said this that I've been hearing that they've been building houses for people in heaven and they're building houses for the anointed ones for the chosen ones and they're building it god will count us worthy in jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen and the person came back and he said i saw it i saw it i saw it they finished building the houses hmm. eh? they what they finished building that's that is to say they are not including any other person no. it's finished that means they know those people coming is that what you say that's what you say Abby? What did Tony? Ah, I said, <laughs> this, this thing you're joking with. They, I've never heard that prophet. I've heard they're building house. I've never heard the prophet that is finished. The point I'm trying to make is simple. Like I said, I have uh, a pastor. I have two minutes. Amen. I'm about to finish. Thank you very much. Please, 
pay attention to the time. Let's get up on our feet, please. Let's get up on our feet. I'm going to pray this prayer. And then pastor is going to pray. I'm going to give it to pastor. It is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. With my soul. you God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.